As promised, the triple threat crushing it in this movie. <laughs> Ladies, how are you? Great. Great, thank you. I wish I had a studio audience. I apologize for my party of one applause. <laughs> but it was amazing, you guys. Well, thank um, you. For you, uh, let's start at the top. I like the fact that for people who think that maybe their wedding's not going right or they're having some issues bringing families together, this movie's going to make them feel like things aren't so bad. There you go. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> this, this probably is the worst. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Ever. They hate their mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> the really, yeah, the most yeah. challenging wedding. wedding gone wrong. Yeah, right. Mm. Let's lean into uh, some of the you know parental child issues taking place with this movie. I embarrass my kids relentlessly. They're always telling me today, maybe the exception, but that I don't dress age appropriate. So, <laughs> have you ever embarrassed your kids, or have your parents ever embarrassed you? Mm. Anything like that? Oh, I, yeah. I, I live to embarrass yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time. I think, I think they have to get used to it. You have to keep that openness. Because in a way, you're saying to the kids, when you grow up, be, be free, be silly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, make 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 mistakes in whatever way, but there's no kind of, you know, if we're, we try to be perfect, all we're saying to them is that, you know, grow up to try to be just right. Amen. You know, instead, go... Go right. crazy. Wear horns. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> wear horns. Hashtag. Life is messy. Have you yeah, ever said to your mom or dad, are you really going to wear that? Or oh, could yeah. you cover your horns? I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, you have. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, what I love about this movie, and I've heard you, all of you mention this at times, and I think the three of you embody this, that you can be strong and female in a multitude of ways. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I think that was very, very important to to put forward. We there were talks early on when the when the script was being written, how would Aurora grow and suddenly like suddenly you know take her power? And yeah. if you can imagine, people would think, well, she could show up in the end covered in armor like Joan of Arc style and fight and be this and or and be daughter of Maleficent and go house. black mm -hmm. and be you know maybe she goes like kind of goth and maybe she gets mm -hmm. and the and there was something really important about the choice. No. Her strength is her her sweetness, her her softness, her love of pink and bunnies, and her she wants to get married, and she wants to, and all these things are not less than they are actually so powerful and so pure and so good and so soft, and that is so female as well, as well as being the you know tyrannical you know leader of a country and an army, and as well as being a completely wild creature full of fire. Well, you know, women can be many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it tremendous duress coming into this, knowing that the original is so beloved? You got to top it. Well, I, for well, me, I'm, I've got the pressure of coming into it fresh, so it's sort of I've got to try and just add to what these guys have already done and what they're doing. So, which is obviously amazing. I really enjoyed it this time because I was less nervous. The first time, I was terrified that I was going to screw it up, or you know, the whole scale of the thing. Right. And seeing Angie. Only ever in Maleficent costume was kind of through me the first time. So this time I was much more relaxed. I actually really loved it. And it kind of shows. We lean into your character more in this one. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the spin-off, you know. It's my next. Is it kind of cool? I mean, you're no rookie, but is it cool to see, like, some of the most expensive, biggest VFX shots of the film lean into your character at one moment? I, don't, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you, you, know? you should no, be no. asking me questions. Well, so, yeah, I should yeah, be, It's really. awesome. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy about that. And I enjoyed doing, you know, being a bit the comedic um, foil for the two of them. You know, right. I've, I often do a lot of quite serious independent stuff, you know, which involves a lot of introspection, chain smoking and crying. And this one was <laughs> walking into things and, you know, double takes. It was right. great. I enjoyed it. I would think in the Disney universe there's no greater pressure than being a Disney princess. Uh, second only, maybe, or or possibly equal to being a Disney <laughs> prince. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think I really like understood the weight of it until I finished. I think I kind of sort of stumbled through it, and then um, yeah, and then it hit me off. It's after. only when you get asked about it. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Really? Sort of, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. With, with no disrespect to the United Kingdom, I think being a Disney prince or princess is almost as good as being a real royal. Well, well, maybe, maybe there's a sort of opportunity to try and set up a new way forward and lead in a more yeah. right dignified way perhaps. without the press intrusion obviously yeah. yeah i think it's a disney film geared towards families and young audiences there's some moments in this movie where your acting chops come into play i mean you, there's some heavy lifting being done by you yeah it was it was it was it was good writing as well you know and there was and and that's a lot to do with um 
Angelina and, and, and having my back and making sure that scenes were really sort of there and developed oh. and everything was was as it should be. So credit to her, really. What was the most difficult day on set? The first is often. The first yeah. was difficult. I had to, well, no, I had to, there was a scene. There was a scene where I had to make a big speech, and I was just like, I was in bits, and there was four hundred. people. Yeah, there was. That was a lot of pressure. That was a lot, and 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 you guys were standing there, and everyone. Yeah, it was. A, that was a lot for me. You don't want I, to have to address, you know, two hundred fairies. Well, I was telling exactly. everyone what to do as well. I was giving orders. Oh yeah, that's true. Kind of, oh, you do. You did great. Yeah. It's Ed. It's Chewatel. What's going on, fellas? How you doing? Good to see you. How are you? Great to see you. Nice work in this. Thank you, thank you. All right, since technically you two are the new kids on the block, tell everybody who you are. Who you are, what you do. I like that, new kids on the block. Very nice. You could have said Backstreet Boys. I'll (laughs) tell you, new kids on the block. It's very my demographic. 98 degrees, whatever you want to be. Um, I I now can only think about new kids on the block and not Maleficent. What what was the question? Off the boy bands, onto this. Um, Now, I happen to be kind of an expert in your characters because I was a Dungeon and Dragons geek. So when people said, what's a dark fae? And I said, oh, a dark fae is actually (laughs) uh, a fallen, it's kind of a a fallen fairy, uh, which is what Maleficent is. And you guys are cut from the same cloth. Sure, yeah. And your character specifically, kind of giving her some guidance. Exactly, yeah. You know, um, you know that one of the things that we were talking about as we were developing the character, and, and you know, Connell in particular, was just trying to figure out how to differentiate all of the different dark fae, how to make them just to create all of these very individual characters and characteristics, and and to how we'd give Connell like all of his you know authority, but his kind of warrior status as well, and then this this wisdom. And the way that he imparts that and the connection that he has with Maleficent and, and, and why and on all of those things. And so trying to put a lot of that into the look and the feel of the character and, you know, and then borrows much more of the kind of um, leans more onto the pugilistic warrior side. I'd sure. Say, of, uh, of sort of an adversary. Equation. Your interactions when we first meet you and Maleficent together uh, kind of clashing a bit. And I love the tension that mounts. Yeah, I think it's interesting the way that they explored or we explored the different um, the different reactions that you can have to to conflict and to being attacked. Right. Um, and you know, we have very different um, approaches, even if uh, both of us want the same thing, which is you know, essentially our people to be left alone and, and to be able to continue our years of um, cultural history and, and identity. Um, you know, we see, we, when we meet Maleficent, we, we, we do both feel very differently about how she can be used and for our gain. And, you know, for me, it's very interesting to see how um, to, ex- to explore and how it ended up that Bora's character, the change in him, you know, right. that the change is possible for all of us and morally, politically, um, we can change our minds, you know, if we're open to, if we really look people in the eyes and try and see their 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 intentions and, and, and meanings and, you know, if we don't go blind into everything, stubborn with our moral and political views, then, you know, we, 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 we can um, we can grow and, and learn and, and we can ultimately have the best outcome. Exactly. The backdrop of this movie makes the world a better place. Let's find some peace, right? Yep.